Mount and Blade Warband is hands down one of the best PC games of all time. And that is really surprising because, first of all, when this game came out, the Mountain Blade series wasn't as big as it is now, and I mean, the series still isn't big. Uh, back then, this was considered an indie game. I, I mean, it, it still is, to some degree. Uh, the Mountain Blade series still is considered pretty indie. What is the main driving force be behind me calling this one of the best PC games of all time? Well, if that little fight sequence in the beginning didn't explain everything, it's the sword play. It is the best sword play I have ever played in any game. It's just perfect. You line up your blocks to block. You you it's like an actual fight. Like you however an actual sword fight would go down or just like an axe fight or any kind of fight in in medieval times. This is uh probably the best simulation of those fights. You can literally do anything in a fight. You can you control every aspect of blocking. You control every aspect of fighting. There is no turn-based nonsense. There is no just standing there and swinging back and forth like in that horrible new Game of Thrones game. You have full control of the combat, and that's what makes this game so superior to other sword play games. You start Mountain Blade Warband by basically creating your character's background, and depending on which options you choose, uh, those options directly influence your skills and abilities. Like, if you choose to be uh, the child of like a nobleman, and you uh, grew up in a nobleman's court, and you were just this rich kid, you're going to have more intelligence, you're going to have a, a better uh, skills at uh, leading people, if you're going to go more with the you know raggedy kind of uh, street urchin type of uh, scenario uh, for your backstory, you're obviously going to be more skilled at uh, combat, maybe you're going to be a little quicker, things like that. It, it all comes together and blends very well, and, and combine that with how complex the character creation screen is, where you can literally make your character look like any human being out there. It's uh, it's an absolutely fantastic customization for your character. You could literally be anything in this game. Anything you can think of in a medieval setting, you can be, and you can look any way you want. Uh, you can be a, a ranger, you can be a, you know an axe-wielding berserker, you can be kind of a, a, a stoic general who doesn't maybe have the best fighting abilities, but he leads his men really well, and he can uh, gather a, a big army. Just anything. Literally, think of something that you can be in a... Uh, in a game of this setting, in a real, like, medieval setting, think of a type of person you can be, post it in the comments, and, and I will, I'm almost certain you can be that kind of character. There is just an infinite amount of depth to uh, what kind of character you can be, and you can say the same thing for the story, because the story of the game is very open-ended. It doesn't follow, like, any kind of linear story. You just run around from town to town, and castle to castle, and major city to major city, and you complete quests for maybe kings, or warlords, or just uh, regular rich businessmen in the town, or, or guildmasters, or what have you. Uh, the main point of the game is, of course, not to help people out. The main point of the game is to use experience from quests you complete or maybe, like, bad or good people you either attack or are attacked by to uh, level up your character and grow your army. Uh, by grow your army, I mean you first recruit volunteers. You can either recruit already seasoned veterans and pubs or things like that, or you can actually just pick up some, you know, scrubby recruits from your average village. These guys will die fast, but also they don't cost a lot, and they do level up, so just some scrubby recruits you recruit for a village. If you make sure they don't die for maybe, you know, a few uh, combat scenarios... They're going to level up to be uh, pretty strong elite fighters, and at that point, they're just going to keep leveling until they're like the most powerful uh, type of soldiers they can be. And, uh, what you have to keep in mind, of course, is the most powerful soldiers, they cost a lot more. Like, just some random villager, he's going to cost a few dinar, you know, to take care of, which is basically the, the, the money in the game. Uh, but a seasoned veteran, you know, some kind of knight on a horse with a lance, those guys are going to cost, like, way, way more. And obviously, uh, it's it's... You know, it's it's upkeep, man. It makes perfect sense. Like, an expensive car, a Ferrari, costs more to upkeep than, you know, a, a 95 Chevy Impala or something. Uh, expensive knights need uh, better food, better sleeping quarters. They, they need squires and stuff. They need higher, uh, more expensive whores, you know. 
uh, just some villager, you can just hire a toothless crack addict for him. But an expensive knight, you know, he needs someone that looks like Megan Fox. So one-on-one -on -one combat in this game is unparalleled. But so is the actual army combat. When you gather up a big enough uh, group, a gang of people, or even uh, to the point where it becomes so big it's an army, it's also incredibly complex. You can do anything you would be able to do in a real army versus army fight. You have complete control over your troops. You can order them to do what you want. Uh, you don't really need to do this most of the time. Most of the time they're pretty smart about fighting and I mean how can you be dumb about fighting? All you do is run towards the enemy and slash or shoot them. If you've seen my review of Mountain Blade with Fire and Sword, which is basically uh, the sequel to this game, you'll basically know everything this game is about. But the biggest difference with, with Fire and Sword versus this game, Warband, is this game doesn't have guns. You see, uh, with Fire and Sword, it's set, it takes place in a um, probably a few hundred years uh, after this game, or maybe 100 years after this game. Uh, also, the, the big difference is this takes place in a kind of uh, fantasy setting. There's no goblins or dragons or anything, but it's like, it's not our world. You know, it's it's basically villages and towns or whatever, but they're not real villages. Whereas uh, Mountain Blade with Fire and Sword takes place in uh, Eastern European settings. So you're going to be running into, you know, Moscow and... Uh, and all those places and you know just that kind of eastern to northern European uh, area of of the world map that's where you're gonna be playing in uh, uh, with fire and sword a lot of people actually prefer this game too with fire and sword personally I don't uh, I, I don't really see much difference in it the, the reason people really like this a lot more than with fire and sword is because in with fire and sword you have guns and guns basically can one hit kill anyone so uh, if the other army just has guns your character could be the most decked out pimp in all of the land and some guy can just shoot him from far away and one hit kill him in a second uh, it takes a lot of the skill out of combat uh, with fire and sword the guns do and it leaves a lot more to luck, where uh, you're basically lucky if you don't get shot in combat. It's a lot like what uh, combat is now, you know, whoever has the bigger guns is going to win 99 out of 100 times. This game is a lot more medieval, and, and the combat focuses on a lot more uh, melee uh, sword play. And that's why uh, in this game you can actually excel and one guy can, can be a, a complete destroyer of worlds, you know, uh, just because you don't have that shooting from far away gun stuff that can just take you out in a second. And you still have crossbows and bows in this game, but they obviously don't do as much damage as guns. They don't have that uh, one-hit kill blasting power. And also you can block arrows and uh, crossbow bolts with a shield. So in this game, if you have a pretty big sturdy shield, you could pretty much be uh, immune to any kind of ranged attacks. Whereas with fire and sword, you can't because guns will shoot through basically anything. They're goddamn guns. The quests you pick up in this game can be quite repetitive. A lot of them just either going to a, a, a town or city and a guy telling you to go kill someone or go kill some bandits or maybe talk to someone on his behalf or maybe uh, transport some livestock or maybe train uh, their villagers if you're going to a small town a lot of our uh, quests are uh, towns uh, town mayors not mayors but like whatever village elders uh, asking you to train some people and once you train those people you have this uh, big uh, battle between uh, the people you train the villagers and some uh, criminals that attack the town when it comes to Mountain Blade Warband, God is in the complexity of the gameplay. It is, like I said, incredibly complex, and you can literally do anything. Think of something off the top of your head that you would be able to do as a uh, a war uh, master or just a, a nice, good, godly general or a knight in medieval times, and you can do it in this game, and that's what makes it so damn fantastic. The multiplayer is also really fun, but because... Uh, with Fire and Sword and Nepali Napoleonic Wars is uh, a newer uh, version of basically Warband. There's a lot more people playing those games as opposed to this game online, but there's still some people playing Warband online. The world map of Mountain Blade Warband is huge. There is, I can't count them all, but just look at this. There's got to be like a thousand different towns and villages and castles and, and uh, big cities. It's insane. 
There's thousands of different warlords. There's thousands of different, like, fair maidens you can court. Mountain Blade Warband actually has an end game. It's not just all about running around and growing a big army and then becoming a powerful, uh, you know, general or a powerful, you know, leader of troops or what have you, whatever you want to be. You could be a powerful diplomat or a powerful uh, merchant. You can be a merchant in this game. Like I said, anything you want, anything you can think of. Uh, the end game in this game is all about actually starting your own kingdom. Yes, you can either become a vessel to a king and basically become a nobleman and then grow in the ranks of, of a particular um, uh, nation as a nobleman, p take over different towns and villages and just grow that way. Or you can start your own kingdom when you're powerful enough, take over castles of other kingdoms, uh, claim them as your own, take over major cities. I mean, the end game of this game, I've never gotten to this, but the ultimate goal here is to just control one whole major empire. But uh, even f you can even go further and just control everything, like all the towns that we saw, all the thousands and thousands of little towns and villages and castle, you can control all of them. You can take everything over in this game. You can literally be the master of this world and picture yourself sitting in like a major city of, of your choosing on a throne ruling every single kingdom of course this would take thousands of hours of gameplay without any cheats on you can of course put some cheats on to make yourself invincible and uh, take over the entire game and maybe a week time um, in real time I mean because even if you're invincible you, you still have to do the dirty work of actually storming castles and cities and that takes a lot of time but um, I, I don't even know if it's possible. I don't even know if you can be really powerful enough and have enough time in your life to take over the entire world of this game. That would be interesting to see if somebody actually ever, uh, without cheats, took over everything in the world. That would be crazy to me. That would absolutely be crazy. You don't even need to get to the end game. Uh, most people will never get to the point in this game where they're actually taking over major cities or castles. Uh, most people will just uh, be content enough to ride around with a big army and level their character and do quests. Do just doing that, just doing what I just said, uh, you could spend hundreds of hours playing it. Okay, uh, it's only when you start spending thousands of hours in this game where where you can actually become strong enough to do the end game. So yeah, this game is incredibly rich and immersive. There is nothing but a, a ton of stuff to do. It could be, like I said, it could become repetitive because a lot of the quests are basically identical, and a lot of the battles uh, after a while start to become identical. It's always two armies running at each other. But uh, again, it depends on the terrain. It depends on what kind of troops you're fighting. You can be fighting guys on horseback. You can be high, uh, fighting guys with a lot of uh, archers. So it, 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 although the battles could become the same, just the different amounts of uh, the variety of different soldiers that that there are in this game uh, it it's not it never really is the same experience although most of the time you basically follow the same strategy like my favorite strategy is I run in at the enemy army as the commander and uh, I actually distract them so they they're all going after me and they completely forgot that there's a whole army going at them so uh, I run to the side and the enemy army follows and then my entire army gets to just attack them from the side so uh, a lot of the soldiers from the enemy army don't even see my army because they're focused on on me and at that point uh, they actually start focusing my on my army and I can flank them from the back I prefer to get off horseback and actually fight uh, hand to hand uh, just because uh, in this particular uh, campaign I'm using a um, a giant axe and um, for that I, I like to feel like a berserker warlord uh, who just does things on foot rather than you know shoots from far away so yeah that's mountain blade warband it is in the top five greatest PC games ever made. And what's even more impressive is that it's from an indie developer. Thanks for watching. I strongly urge everyone who hasn't played this yet to pick it up as soon as possible. Mountain Blade Warband gets an official Stan Birdman rating of a 9.8 out of 10. This is as close. The only thing that holds this game back is the graphics aren't top notch. But the gameplay and the story and everything else is just fantastic. Thanks for watching. Goodbye, my friends. Ah! <laughs>
Whoopsie daisy, I killed my own recruit. Uh, Alice? Yes, Mr. Birdman? Could you send his widow some flowers? Thanks.